Good morning from Yerevan, Armenia. Yesterday we got a taxi back from Dilijan to the capital Yerevan to spend one night before we start our adventures south in the country. Oh my god, taxis out here, they're so much fun. Seriously, get an old version <laughs> Soviet car, it is the best adventure on the mountain roads. But we are starting our two day trip to the south of Armenia, somewhere that is a little bit less explored, apart from one place that we're visiting that is very, very touristy. Um, we're gonna visit, of course, a monastery, some waterfalls, we could try some great food. And we're gonna head to some border towns, some towns that are around areas that have been very much heavily involved in the war in Nagorno-Karabakh. We'll also be quite close to the border with Iran. So it's very interesting, very different to the north, and I can't wait to get going. Show us the best Armenian music. <laughs> <laughs> We have just stopped halfway on our drive and this is all too familiar. If you've seen our other videos when we explored um, Armenia, we actually went to the Irini Caves and behind me is part of the Irini Caves. And look how cool this is. There's like a barrel on top of a rock because this area is very famous for wine. Um, but our driver, Garam, is so cute. We've been listening to Drake, having a good time playing all the songs um, on our drive. But like I said, we are halfway. So that it's about a 220 kilometer drive to where we are heading and we are 60 miles in. So that makes it about halfway kilometers to miles. Um, and I'm really excited to explore the south with Destination Armenia. They actually create bespoke um, tours for you. I wouldn't call them a tour agency. They more like use their resources to sort of create these packages and offer you sort of unique experiences, which I think is amazing. Um, so yeah, we have two days with Destination Armenia exploring the south, as Matt said at the beginning. And we have about an hour or so to go into our first destination, which I am not going to tell you, but it feels good to be back. We're not going to be trying any wine this time. We've just stopped off at the entrance to the Sunik province. You've got the old sort of Soviet pillars here either side and it's you can tell it's a country and an, an area that is very close to the war that uh, occurred last year. You've got signs on the side of the road for the Communist Party and uh, you just see a lot of army heading past. It's, it's definitely an uneasy time in this area of, uh, of Armenia. I think we're definitely getting closer to our, our first destination now that we are in the province of Sayunik. Um, and it's definitely a lot different. The, the south seems a lot more different to the north. It's not as green, it's, it's a lot drier, arid. Um, I presume the further south you go, the hotter it gets. You're, um, you're definitely not in Europe now. If there was an argument whether Armenia was in Europe or Asia, the further south you go, the closer to the border with Iran. But we know Iran is definitely not in Europe. And we have made it to our final destination. Or of first. First destination. Well, it was the final destination because of the long journey of Tatev, um, which is essentially an extremely old and historical complex with the monastery up the top. How a are we getting there? In Armenia? How, yeah, surprise. And how are we getting there, you ask? Well, we are going on the world's longest non stop ropeway. I'm a bit scared, I can't lie. Hello, Can we have two tickets, please? please so this was built in 2010. I'm not sure how people actually used to get up to the monastery before that. I presume you'd have to drive or hike um, and it is around 5,700 meters long um, or just over and you get amazing bird's eye views of the gorge below. We had to book in advance. Um, so it was like 7,000 each per person for the return. You wouldn't want to get stuck up there and uh, it's the quickest way, it's the best way and it is the most touristy thing to do here in the south of Armenia. Here we go. This is a bit cramped. This is the longest reversible tramway in the world. I think they actually 
put as many people as possible on this cable car but taking this takes 12 minutes if you do the drive it takes 40 minutes so it's a lot quicker and one of the wires apparently weighs the same as 10 bush elephants and I'm pretty sure of the amount of people in here they <laughs> weigh the same as at least 15 bush elephants thank you for using the services of the wings of Tatov aerial tramway now that was interesting. Them views were definitely something special, something that you wouldn't experience if you were to drive up here. I definitely recommend paying that little bit extra and getting the cable car all the way up over the gorge. It just looks incredible. I can't believe how many people we fit in there though. And from up here, it just looks just impressive as we're now like, we've just met our guide Nelly and we're walking towards Tatev Monastery, which is literally, I don't know how they put these monasteries in these locations. They put them in the craziest of locations they really do so behind me is Tatev monastery and Nelly has told us some interesting things things that we probably wouldn't have found online so essentially Tatev in Armenian means to give wings there was apparently a legend when the constructors back in the 9th century um, were constructing it he stood on the top and he said may god give me wings obviously in armenian not in english um, so that's where the name comes from tatev tateva monastery basically wings i'm not sure if we're going to gain wings um obviously i feel like it looks more impressive from outside in in comparison to actually being inside the complex but i think you have to remember that it's very old back to the ninth century it is a very very old monastery so it turns out that this tree here is like a magical tree and if you sit under it the dreams will come true what are you dreaming of then well if i tell you it doesn't come true there's a wedding inside the monastery apparently that's a good sign. Wow, we were uh, we were so lucky in there. I think the luck's in for us today. There was actually a wedding going on, and before there used to be frescoes all over the monastery, but a lot were destroyed during different battles over the years and uh, a lot of earthquakes that they've had in the region. back in like the 13th century. Can you imagine putting your milk in there? I can't, to be honest. I feel like, I feel like it's not cold enough. Is it cold? No. It's, it, the room is a little bit cooler. It's a bit chilly, but maybe it was cooler hundreds and hundreds of years ago. So we're now in the library, and just outside of the library is, oh my God, that view over the gorge, but I don't fancy that drop at all and apparently people when there was feuds back in back many years ago people were actually really thrown off of this i mean it's pretty high like i said at the beginning i definitely feel like the charm of the monastery complex is to come outside and be surrounded by these amazing views there's I feel a like reason the ropeway yeah there's a reason why the ropeway was built um but obviously once you've seen one monastery unfortunately they are all pretty similar in terms of the style the layout obviously the history will differ but, but you're, i feel you're like here, here the views and the ropeway you, the ropeway and the views proper sell it to you even the cows are loving the tata view i'll oh, be careful mate that drop people have been pushed off this cliff during the history got a, uh, a bit of a roadblock. And now we have to change cars. The reason for us having to change cars was because we had to make it down to Konzorask, which actually means the village of apples. And it is a humongous cave village, cave city. And the only way to get to the village is by the swinging bridge. This bridge is sketchy i've been told that it was built in 2012 i mean i'm not so sure it is 
very wobbly. It's like 60 something meters high, 100 and something meters long. And apparently it can take up to four tons. So it can take a lot of people, but it's very, <laughs> very wobbly. I just can't believe that the people lived in the village even during the, oh my God, during the Soviet Union. So up to the 1950s, they lived in these caves. Oh my God, can you hear the creak? Molly, don't look down. No, I'm not looking. Do not look down. That's the sound of a jackal. That was crazy. Wolves at an old cave village, which is absolutely beautiful, but you're also only one mile away from the border where the enemy still has guns pointed at the new village. This is the old village, but the new village, there is still guns pointed at. Ganads. Ganads. <laughs> There's waterfalls, but I didn't expect waterfalls like this in Armenia. This is literally getting me soaking wet. It was spraying onto me. Unbelievably powerful. We did have it all to ourselves, but there are some other people that have come now, obviously because it is beautiful and it is quite hidden. But yeah, I am soaked. I probably shouldn't be standing this close with the camera. was actually really impressive. Did you think it'd be that big? No, when they said massive. waterfall, I was expecting like a little stream. It was big. But one of the many gorges here in the Sunik region, there's there's so many. It, the, the nature here is so impressive, but like I said, you wouldn't be able to get here unless you had a car or you were doing some, oh, flying the eye, some sort of tour. But we actually have to head back. We're actually running back. We're running a little bit late. As we've got to go back to our guest house, because we've got like a cooking, we're gonna let Molly, you're learning to cook tonight. Before our cooking class, we really need to show you where we spent the night here at Hotel Yeghevnat. I think I've pronounced it correctly. We have a huge living room, which kind of feels like a very homely, sort of like- I feel like Goris everywhere is really homely. Really homely, vintage TV, which I'm absolutely obsessed with. We have massive bed, which was so comfortable, desk, chairs, and look at how big this room is, our bathroom. And it was the best place to spend the night and now we're gonna learn how to cook. We even have this huge balcony and I think around there is a garden, a huge garden out the back, but a huge balcony that overlooks the whole, look at this, the whole city of Goris. It literally is 
in between all of the mountains. It really is a beautiful town, but they, call, they like to call it a city. I'm gonna call it the city of gross. It's time to cook. Let's cook. How do you wear it? Oh my God, let me see. N now you are ready to cook. No, now you're ready to oh, cook. Okay, now I'm ready. Got some fresh yogurt, I've got egg, I've got flour and I'm mixing it. I think I'll be able to do this. And now we're pouring. And now we mix. So as Molly mixes behind, what we, well, Molly is making is choratan, which is essentially fermented milk, flour, egg. Then you add onion to it and you get this like, this is really good for the gut, it's really good for digestion and it can be stored for a long period of time. Are you mixing? I'm mixing. Molly's mixing. Voila! Well, what did you think of my mixing skills? Molly the mixer. It has come out like this and then we topped it with butter, onions and mint. And then, oh, I've got to put garlic in actually. Put some garlic Almost in. Almost forgot. Do you mix? Let me just mix. And then dip the bread, yeah? Like this? Dry, dry, dry. Dry. Okay, oh. Some dry leather. Oh, that crumbles. That is crumbly. I'm going to make a right mess here. Oh my God, look at this, right? And then like this? Ah, oh, like this? Maybe. Ah, oh, and then you eat with the spoon. And then you the eat with ah. the spoon. Oh my God, okay. More. More, right. more. How is it? Oh my God, it's like yogurt soup and very minty. As Molly cooked, the gentleman's job is to pour the homemade Ooh. Vodka, that vodka. sounded nice. It did. It's for Molly. <laughs> A little. And now you have yeah. to try it. Ready? Ganads. 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 In one? In one? Straight. Not now. Eat it. I'll sip. I'll sip some to tell. Oh, it's good. Ooh. Stop. It tickles. <laughs> Anti corona. To the chef. To the chef. Gennads. Another Gennads. The best chef. My hand already. Oh. <laughs> you drunk. Gennads to the chef, indeed. I'm not sure if Matt meant me or the lovely lady that helped me make, I can't even remember the name of the dish that I was making. You will hear it when I made it, but yeah, I can't even remember. But our time in the Sunic region is not at an end just yet. Tomorrow we are doing something completely different and very interesting, so stay tuned for that. But today we were with Destination Armenia for the whole day exploring the region. We checked out the waterfall this morning. Um, we've had a great breakfast, great dinner, home-cooked, traditional. We checked out Honduras, which was the cave city and basically been on the road and obviously visiting Tatev with the ropeway, which was pretty incredible. But as I said, tomorrow is gonna be super exciting so stay tuned for that and we will see you in the next one when we explore more of this region.